Hi everyone, welcome to part 3 of my Avengers Infinity War series. Yeah, in these Ranger tutorials we're showing you different levels all combined together. So this is stage 3 and this is the final bit for our New York level. So uh, in here we're going to be showing you how we get the, the wind to blow the car so they come crashing through as you'll see very shortly here. Like they stack up on the screen which is quite a cool effect. Now I've used Kanan and I've got the uh, Doctor Strange power disc uh, to give me the cloak, which sadly is not always down, that would have been quite good. And I've slightly tweaked this level so that when Doctor Strange attacks them, yeah, and I say sadly the cloak doesn't stay down all the time, but when Doctor Strange attacks them, the, cl the, uh, the smoke disappears. In the actual final level I keep the smoke on all the time, but you'll now notice the cloak is down, look, all the smoke is disappearing. So do you think do you think Kanan makes a good Doctor Strange or do you think I should have used Obi Wan Kenobi? They're the two characters I think were probably the closest to looking like a, a wizard. So anyway, let me know in the in the comments below. But what you find here is we've done all the the the, the lightning effects, the smokes, and the other two clips. What we'll do here is that when we kill our wave of enemies, which we're also going to do in this particular clip, the wind changes direction. So at the moment the wind is blowing across the city, so as soon as I kill this guy, uh, and I'm not killing him with the lightsaber because that just wouldn't be Doctor Strange's style. Okay, but as soon as you see he's died, you'll see suddenly the wind has changed directions and the cars are now flying back the other way. So it looks like carnage is going on, that's the, that's the, the idea of this effect. So now I've killed him, the cars are going to fly back, here they come, smashing back. Yeah, so that was, that was the effect that I was going for. Now obviously we're also going to look at how we generate the waves and the boss fights. Now at the end of this clip I'll do a, a full run through again of the entire stage, but this is only stage one of the level. Yeah, and we're going to uh, like uh, chain these along one section after the other. So like I keep mentioning in Guardian Galaxy next and we'll do them on there so it will run through basically the plot of the film or slight variations of the film. You see there I get hammered with the, uh, with the, with the uh, car there. Sadly, I have to say, the, the cloak doesn't really work. You have to keep holding triangle to keep the cloak up like that. Uh, so I tried to look like Doctor Strange. It's a shame it wasn't down all the time, but oh well. Uh, I, could, I didn't like the power disc, it was the only use I could find, so it's been worth it now if I've actually used it. Right, so I hope these have all been following quite nicely, but we'll hopefully finish all off so we then have that uh, Q ship all completed there at the top. So we're now going to go through all those stages and the final items for this particular stage of our Avengers Disney Infinity War. So in the previous clip we've uh, just set all the vehicle summoners to put the cars on the road. Now these cars like I mentioned then have to be cars that you can drive. The actual uh, ones that are used to drive around the city aren't the same ones and do not get affected by the wind so that's a bit pants. But what we're going to do now is we're going to create this weather vane and we're going to use two of these weather vanes and we'll hide them out of the way. They don't need to be on show but you can't make them invisible. So one is to blow one way and you'll see the angle that they're pointing through. The, this, the large end and the small point shows it's blowing across and the other one's blowing back. So this is going to set the wind going from side to side. I could move it going back and forth either way. I, I just did it left and right but I did it that particular case. So what we need to do is we need to switch this one on okay but we're going to change the property to this and we're going to say right can we make it super strong so that means the cars will fly across right they won't just just slowly get pushed they get completely pushed across the one side but one thing I do need to change here is the second option which says everything if I have it on everything it means even I get pulled across even I can't move so what I actually want to change that is just the vehicles and it's only the vehicles that the Disney Infinity characters can drive. I think I've stressed that so much now that I'm done. So that's the weather vane on that side. And I need to do the same settings on this side. So go into there. Go to properties. Increase that up to the full length. And then just change the other one to just be the vehicles only. And it's little things like this that you forget to do the other section. And then realise what the hell it messes the whole level up. So we'll move that across. And hopefully we'll get there. Right and just the vehicles. Right, so what we need now is a little bit of logic magic to, to be able to manage it from switching from one side to the next. Okay, so this will allow you to get one happen to curse, and you can use this to spawn one enemy when that dies, spawn another enemy and keep going back and forth. So you don't have to use it for weather vanes, it can be for anything, but it's just the way the, the logic is used. Uh, so I hope breaking these down into little sections are better and easier to use on the screen. So we need some logic gates, and all this is managed is by a number of logic gates. 
So the first one happens to be the one that triggers it. Okay, this is the one that triggers the screen. These two here will then are the switches on and off. Okay, and it's especially important when they close. So we are going to get a signal from here that says, right, can we have the weather vane on? So we're going to do a new logic connection. Yeah. On output, so we're going to go down to the option there. So on output, can we input a signal into that gate? Okay, so we input a signal into there, which is great. That means, right, we've now sent that signal in. So what we like to do now is can we turn on, so new location on output, can we turn on that weather vane? So we turn on that weather vane, that then gets the weather. Any objects, even the buildings, will get blown into that particular item. So we're going to switch that on. So on the other side, if we're switching that one on, I need to make sure the other one is switched on. So I'm going to do another new logic connection on output that. Can we switch that one off? So they've now been switched on and off. Okay. But what we want to then do, well, if we've done that, what we need to do now is we need to close this gate. Right. So we're going to close that gate there. By closing that gate, we can't then switch that vein back on. So when an enemy dies, new signal comes in, we can't get to that connection. So what it will actually do now is said, right, new logic connection, if input is blocked, can we now go back the other side away? So now we say if input is blocked because the gate is closed, it will send us to this route and we'll input a signal into here. So on output of this one, can we then say new logic connection on output, can we turn that one off? So this time instead of turning it on, we're going to turn that one off. And on the other option, new logic connection on output, can we turn the other one on? And switch that on. Okay, so that now switches those two out. Now the last thing we need to do on that gate is reopen the gate. So new logic connection on output, can we reopen that gate? So the next time it goes through, it goes there. And it'll just keep switching back and forth. Now you could do this on a timer. So you could be in a room where the wind is blowing all around the place, keeps swaying around. So you're on a map that it keeps pushing you off. So you could do like a level where you have to keep balance or fight the thing. But that there, just that little logic there, controls all the wind going back and forth between the system. So what we know here is that when we get this timer, and that timer has worked, we know that the timer is on. We know we've got our ship. That was the time. If you go back to our very first clip, that's what gets the circular ship to appear. So when we know that's that's been completed, right? We know the ship's there, the cards are there, right? And that's the case. Then can we turn that on? That'll input and get the wind effect to happen straight away. And that simple little thing does all the wind. That really is it. So that section's done. So what we've got to do now is we've got to create the enemy, the attacking wave force yeah so we've got to go and find out right, how do we defeat these individuals so we now need an enemy wave generator because I want to know from each particular case but the wave generator has a number of different tools that you can use on it so let's just put the the enemy wave generator on if I can find it I've lost it again okay so we can use it this is going to do the same set of creatures that appear in and again and again okay so we'll have a load of enemies appear now from there what happens when that's completed yeah. So what we're going to do is we just need a couple of logic gates now. These are just the, the effects that happen that follow them from this particular case. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, right, um, when that enemy lot is defeated, I'm structuring it in a way that we can follow it. So we can say, right, once we've done, we're going to then respond to this using this logic gate here. So I need to track the record that we've done. Okay, so I'm going to because basically we're going to have uh, three waves of creatures. So I need two logic gates, which will show up in a moment. Yep. Yeah. And I need to track how many times we've used this wave tool because it's in a loop scenario that we're picking through on the screen. Right, now we also need some targets. And I'm going to use the red bomb things, but we could add in these targets. Spider-Man, which I showed you in the second clip, probably wasn't the best group. So maybe you want to use the circles like I showed you when I did that clip last year about Spider-Man suit flying through it. So you could use circles for him to fly through it because Spider-Man is not ideal to shoot it, whereas Thor and uh, Iron Man are quite appropriate. So he only chose five, but they're the objects we're going to shoot. So when the wave's done, we're just going to switch those items on. And then where they're done, we're going to switch the wave back on. Okay, so we need a couple of other tools. And that basically is to count where we are. So we need a counter. And I always, and like I say, when I look at that, I always get confused which one that we go through. Instead of having a favourite, it's a good one, you can just have a high tool, right? So this counter here is going to record how many waves that we've had. Because on the third, on the second, after we defeat the third wave, that's when we want the boss to fight. And this counter here is going to count how many of those have we hit. Have we destroyed all five within the time limit? Okay, so that's what that counter is. Now I make a little mistake here. What I do now is I've got a timer tool, 
and I couldn't work out what was the right tool. Do I use the timer? Do I use the countdown? And the one I pick uh, is wrong. Okay, it's the time delay. It's it was the wrong tool. I should have used the repeater tool. Okay, now at the very end of this clip, I'll show you the correction. Uh, but the logic still is the same scenario, but you should have used the repeater. I use the time delayer and that's wrong. So the way, when you see that option there, don't put that, put the repeater in. Okay, so now we've got this logic set up, we've got our enemy wave here. So what we're going to do is we're going to configure this, yeah, and we're going to go down and we're going to go and configure the wave. So the question is, what creatures do we want to appear? And then we're going to pick up the various different types, whether it's Star Wars or stuff, but because it was based on the film I'm going to try and pick something like the creatures that were in uh, the battle at New York. Now admittedly there was only two characters but we obviously want to make a game of it so we're going to have a few more little characters here. So we'll have the big the big giant boss bloke. Uh, and by the way if you haven't seen Infinity War you need to start watching that pretty soon. It's out now on, on uh, DVD now. You need to watch that pretty quickly because I'm going to spoil the, the story for you as we go through but if you don't already know the ending. And uh, we use a load, a load of the big ice giants. I think the ice giants were quite good to add to the effect. Right. I need to do five in total. And again, you can make this as complicated as you want. You could have a massive battle if you wanted in New York all around the Q ship. Uh, you might want to do it so you have to fly around the ship because although the Q ship's quite cool and effective and I've got you to shoot the target. You don't get to see it that much when you're fighting on the ground. It's to, there to add to the whole theme of it. Right, also it says, do you like to delay the, the respawn? I want them to basically all appear as soon as possible. So I want zero. I want them all to appear straight away. No delay, please. Thank you. Okay, so that there is my enemy wave set up. Okay, so when our guy's game starts, okay, we're going to get this option here. When does the, when's the ship completed? Well when the ship's completed is when we get that time delay to stop the circle and again look back at the previous clips we'll show you where these logic gates have suddenly appeared from nowhere but this is the these logic gates is what trigger the whole event of so basically the, the ship's loaded up can we now have the wave spawn so it's what our triggers the, the wave so in this case trigger the wave the wave will now appear and the enemies will appear on the screen so what we're going to do is what happens there? So we've got a list of actions, new logic collection. What happens? Is the wave been defeated, generated? Well, what you can do is you can choose a single option when each individual enemy of that wave is defeated. Yeah. So in this case, when we get each wave, we're going to say, well, if that's the case, can we input a signal back into this weather vane? And by doing that, every time in that wave of five or 20 characters, the wind will keep changing direction and it will switch between the two every time uh, an enemy is destroyed. So that's great, but that's just one stage of the enemy. What we want to do is, what if you then defeat the entire wave? The wave has been killed completely. So in that case, we now do when the wave's defeated. So we've got two different types of outputs coming here. And if that's the case, I want to input that into this signal. So we input into here. Right, so it's put a route in here. So we now, now we've killed everybody. What do you want to do? Well, first of all, we need to record that we have actually defeated it. Yeah, because I want to do three sets of waves. So new logic connection on output of there can we increase this counter okay so we're going to increase it by one that counter is going to record the number of options we've got so one of the options is we start here it's got two yeah we're actually having three waves you go well that's one well actually we start on the first wave so when it's complete it'll do wave one's complete then wave two's complete and when wave two's complete it will still do another one yeah but it will then actually show so we do want the count in this case to be two Right, so that that's quite good. So that's our little counter to do to do the wave point. Yeah, so that's okay. so when that's three, we then want to stop it, which is why I needed the second gate. So we're saying when the target is reached, yeah, when that target is reached, there, what we want to say is, do not continue any further. So what we're going to do here is we're going to close this gate, which means that when we defeat the wave, the signal goes through to restart it, and it can't, so it stops. Yeah, it can't go and put these the targets back up, which is the whole object here, which allows me now to load up the boss fight. And by the way, this is purely by chance. I didn't realise the boss fight just fitted in there. That was I really I was going to put it higher up to drop in, but what I'm going to do is I'm just just slightly above the ground, and uh, um, Ronan will just drop into that particular group, which is quite good. But what you need to do is once you've put the boss fight in there, and by the way. There's a long pause here. This is not me just waiting. The system wouldn't release it as it sets it up. What you need to do here is just once you've got it in, you have to go to the settings of this boss fight. 
and you need to change so we'll go to the drop down list go to properties and we have to choose who do we want the item to be and one of those options are Ronan now you can let me know if this is right or not I think the two characters I can use for the infinity war are green goblin and Ronan so I think Ronan's one of the, the, the individual but the green goblin is going to be Thanos in our scenario and before anyone says well it's not that's not Thanos we're limited to what we've got now so that's all we're going to do so I'm in this case going to choose Ronan for this particular stage if you disagree with me let, let me know tell me what you think so what we're saying here is when we defeat the wave and it goes in we find that gate's been closed if that's the case the input but we know we've done three waves so therefore can we trigger this boss so what we say is can this boss fight can we actually now switch it on and that is now going to have the boss enemy appear there on the screen so that's our enemy waves sorted through that locks it through brilliant so that's that bit done that's our three sets of waves occurring on the boss fight but in between that we would like to have a little different different type of gameplay we've killed one set now we want to attack the ship so we do new logic connection on output can we input a signal into this logic gate and this logic gate is going to manage all the target practice that we have to do all the things we have to shoot yeah so we input in that particular signal all right so and that's the case what we want to do here is we've we've got past we're only on wave one and we're only on wave two therefore I want now the targets to be here so a new logic connection on output I'm gonna to go to is can we reset those and can we show that so can you do reset and that one when by doing reset basically means it's now visible yeah so new logic connection on output can you reset that particular setting okay and I gotta do it for all five the more targets you got the more um, connections you'll have to do and the, these bombs for some reason do not gobble up memory so the more you do with these the more that will take up as well okay the last one so that comes through can we have those objects all on show so that now shows me all them they're great they now all appear which is brilliant okay now what we're going to do here is when we break or collect those right we're going to increase our counter so new logic connection can we increase that right same thing again new logic connection when we broken or collect them can we count the counter again now once we reach our counter of five right when we hit our target then we're going to say brilliant you've done that you've shot all five of them in time can you hit the wave generator again and it will then repeat through that whole cycle so it's going to go back and hit that wave generator there on the screen so in this particular scenario that counter is going to be quite fundamental if we put all the logic to that counter we are setting that in stone it doesn't give me the flexibility to change that around so what I tend to like to do is chuck in another logic gate you'll see I've in all my previous clips I use logic gates it gives me those various options so before we do that let's go to the properties of the counter and just make sure we change it from 2 to 5 yeah so that logic counter is now 5 yeah so what we want to do now is, and I don't want to display the counter either, so I just want it to be, you can see there's five targets you've got to hit, we don't even have to say it. But instead of having all the logic come from that counter, I'm going to have it from this um, logic gate. And the reason for that is, if I decide to change my mind, it will, for me to deactivate what the counter does, i just got to sw close the gate. You cannot close a counter. So it gives me that choice. Let's press a moment, I don't have anything to do with it. But if I change my mind, I come up with another plan, I can do it. So what you see I've just done here, I said on target reach, can I input a signal into that logic gate? Now that logic gate controls what do we do, yeah? And I can then go from there and do different things. So our first object is we've done all our targets, therefore can we regenerate the wave? So we're going to do a new logic connection and connect to our enemy wave generator. So in this case here, we're going to go new logic connection, on output, can you connect to that? Okay, and we're going to generate new waves, so our second wave will now appear and it will carry going back through the list. Okay, so that's our objective done. Now, the thing we've got to look at here is our timer. We've got a certain time limit on here to sort this out. Now, you'll see here I've gone in here and this is where I've picked the wrong option. Like, where's my counter? I've only got the number of counts. So that's the wrong one that I wanted, so I'm going to delete that. And I did stress this, so that was the wrong one. So in my Bright Spark, I put, I think, time delay on instead. 
or is it time? Yeah, so I use the timer instead because the timer gave me a certain time limit on it. So I thought I'll use that option. That is still the wrong option. I should have picked the repeater. I've stressed that. Uh, in a moment, at the, towards the end, when I'm doing little bug fixes, you'll see that we will have to put the timer on. So what we're going to say here is right. When we get an output from the gate, we're starting on here. Can we start the clock? Okay. In this case, when we start this game, can you start the timer? Yeah, or start the repeater. Now, what we're saying is when the delay has reached the target, in this case, it's saying 30. So I think I set this to 30 seconds, which is way too much. I think the best option was 10 seconds. Yeah, so set the repeater to 10 seconds. If that is the case, then we're going to say, well, hold on, timer's up. You didn't do it in time. So we need to switch the things back on again. So in that case, I need another logic gate. Okay, and this logic gate is a reset. It says you didn't do it. So can we reset option? So we're saying on here, now in this case I'll do it as a repeater. On repeat, can you go into that particular section? Right, but we're going to say here is when timer is uh, expired, yeah, so when it gets to the end, what we like to do is can you do the option? Now, the reason why this is the wrong thing is that when we finish the game, it doesn't reset. It starts off where you left off, which is a bit annoying. So that's a bit of a shame on that particular case. So in this case here, we'll do this logic gate, and we're going to say, right, on output, new logic gate, on, open, on output on here, what we'd like to do is can we uh, reset the counter? Because the counter may have got four of them. I want you to go back and reset them. So we then go, oh, so, so, if, so even though you've got four and you only need one more, the counter goes back to zero and then, and then switch these all back on again. So this logic says, right, on those of these, can you go into each one of those and can you make on output, can you put them all visible? Yeah, so we're resetting each one of those as we go through on the screen. Your logic connection, on output, can we make those all visible? Yeah, so that's what we're doing on this on this particular setup. Okay, so do reset, new logic connection, on output, yeah, just, just reset them again so they all reappear on the screen. Okay, so we just did the last one, so it resets them and puts them all visible on the screen. That's it's done. Right, so that that now controls all that. That got us in that loop and is fixed. So what we're going to do is, well, what happens if you do hit all five targets within the time limit? Well, that counter is going to reach, and it's then going to send a signal to this logic gate. Well, in this case, if I get a signal here, stop the report, the uh, the report uh, repeat tool, if I could pronounce it correctly. So in this case, on output, new logic connection. We're going to go into our time now. I'm going to the timer, but like I mentioned, it's the wrong field. You're going to go to your repeater instead, and you're going to switch the thing off. Okay, so I choose a setting here. Ignore this one. You choose the off setting. That will stop the orbs being reset and appearing on the screen, and we know we've done our job, which is quite the cool thing. Okay, so that is done, and now we have our, our loop and our, our setup done on the screen. Now, one thing you'll notice is that the orbs are already on show because that is the default view of the orbs. So I'm just going to create another uh, logic gate to reset them at the beginning so they take them all off. So I'm just putting a new logic gate in here. On output, can we hide these orbs? Right. And the good thing here is because I haven't actually used all the memory up, I've been quite free. I don't have to be very careful of what memory I'm using. Uh, the Rogue One level, I had to be really clever on how I used what components. Because we've got a little bit of leeway, we can be a little bit just... Um, we can just chuck in as many th objects we want at the moment, which is quite nice. And that pressure is quite nice not having to worry about that. Okay. This is why I originally thought these first quicks weren't gonna, these first clips weren't gonna take too long to do, because I thought I'd just get a circle, put the logic in, done. But that circle was a bit the bit that gave me a bit of a headache. Right, so we now have our option that resets though, so we've now hide all the objects, which is great. So what my question is here is, when do we hide them up? Well, we hide them as soon as the game loads up. So I need to get a signal into this logic gate. And if that's the case, I go all the way back to my starting point. And as I mentioned in my previous clips, that this figure here is what tests the whole lot out. And I have that button there purely to do a test run. But never test it. Save it, test it, reload, and then you carry on again. Because once you put those circles on, you cannot save the actual object. So you'll see here, all I've done is just put input signal that hides those, those orbs in the way. So all I've got to do now is position where do I want those orbs to appear. And I'm going to do them in a, a cross pattern 
inside the circle. Make sure you're not on the line because that's where the bricks are going to be. So we need to make sure they're roughly in the middle of the screen. I'm just going to try and make it as even as possible. So all I'm going to do here is just position these orbs so there are enough air for me to shoot. And as you saw from the first clip, it took me blooming ages to get them uh, uh, shot. Right. Keep those, move those across. Now, I don't know when the next clips are coming, but they are, and they're being worked on. Uh, I know the next one, there is no clever logic or anything there. It's just something we've done before, but just a very different variation to it. But it's part of the Infinity War theme, so that's quite handy. Um, so I don't think anything should now be, be, a, should be a hurdle for us now. I'm just making sure I'm counting them evenly so they look spaced apart the same. And really the only reason why I put these orbs in was so that the user, the player, gets to look at the ship. Because I put all that effort into the ship. If I just had the battle on the ground you wouldn't actually get to see it at all. And so this was just to make sure, okay, can we have some interaction with the ship please? Now if we had text we'd say shoot the orbs, do the text, which we would do. but. We have to try and lead the user. The user's going to go, what the hell's happening? And because the ship's in the ground, once the enemy's gone, the user, if they didn't know, would say, well, let's go and have a look at the ship. You, you want to go and notice it. Then you'll see the target, and you'd presume that you'd have to shoot those. So they pretty much could work that out. Uh, and then once they heard, they'll heal the enemy appearing. So it does feed it quite nicely. Right, so that's us there, set up, with our enemy set up with the targets. Right, so the last bit. Okay, so what we're going to do here is where, where am I going with this one? Uh, it should be, if I'm correct, we need the path creator tool. Where am I going? Oh no, the doorway. That's it. The doorway. This door is essential, okay, because that's going to lead us into our next level, which is with Guardians of the Galaxy with Star Lord. So you'll see here those explosion bricks. I want them to destroy. So I'm going to put that, and it just fits in, just a bit from there, so they'll fit in here so you can access that doorway, so it's just the right width. So what that happens is they'll smash those bricks, and then they'll see the door, and then that will then load the next stage of the uh, Infinity War saga. Which is all good, so okay, that's the doorway, but the problem is, we've got those destroyable bricks, which the user, if they were playing, may avoid and go straight to and not have to complete this level. So in that case, what I want to do is I want to stop the user to be able to shoot those bricks. And the only way I can do that is by putting a panel in front of it. So what we're going to do here is we are going to put in a path. You know all the doors that I've done on various other levels, like the um, Echo Base. I've done doors throughout the place. It's a straightforward door. Even my um, scarab, my first scarab with the Atats, this is just a doorway. So I'm going to just do a door coming up, about three bricks. So I'm going to do two points, one more point, and another one above it. Okay, so this is just going to be a, a path tool where our panel is going. Once we've defeated the boss, I'm going to lift the panel up, and we're going to show you the enemy. So I'm just going to do two dots there. I don't tend to like when I've noticed if you do them on the just two dots, sometimes it flips round. So what I'm going to do is going to put one point here, and then I'm going to move it up so we have the two sections, because occasionally it, it doesn't work perfectly. So there's the first one, and there's the second one. So it guarantees that it will it won't mess the door up. So that's there our, our path, yeah. I'm going to switch that path off, yeah. So it's not connected. So the properties of that is switched off straight away, yeah. I don't need to change the speed or anything like that, which is quite good, right? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a tool panel. So I go back to my simple toys, and this is where my daughter Jessica, who won't do any talking, I've tried to get to do some talking tonight, but she won't do it. But um, this is where my daughter Jessica turned around and he said, "Where's the red?" like it was like <laughs> I'm not playing this if it's not got a red section in it so I had to make this section red so that's going to fit there on top of the door so I'm just going to keep it up from the side but it will then just slide up show them they can go and destroy that and pick that on the screen okay so move that back now the other thing we've got to think of here which I'm going to show a bit later is like how do I get the user to look at that yeah so we need to to attract their attention to that. So I'm going to show you how we do that in a moment. First of all, I'm now just going to click this panel to this path. Yeah, so we're talking about path. And now it's connected to the path. So it now covers up those bricks so they can't shoot them. Yeah. So what we can do now is we can color those bricks in. 
So I'm just going to get a couple more little ones here, because I didn't know what I was going to do with here, and I'm just going to cover those up. I'll just do one above more. Okay, and I'm going to colour that in the red. So that was to give it just that little bit of red effect from the ship, so no one can ever go at me on that one. And occasionally that happens, by the way. When you use the colour tool, it jumps you straight to the very bottom. Every time this happens to me, I panic. and like, is it going to crash? It hasn't crashed, so it's okay. Which, I don't know if I've mentioned this at all in the whole of these past three clips. Are you saving as you go along? Make sure that you do. Right, now we're just going to change it. There's lots and lots of colours to choose from. I'll be interested to hear what your feedback was of this level. Did I, do you think I got the, the, the ship right? Do you think it looks correct? Did I think I hit nailed it? I don't know. I'm quite pleased the way it's turned out and it, it sets the theme quite good. Right, that's the last one done, so set that all red. And again, it's jumped to the very bottom of the screen again. Ooh. I go all the way back up. Oh, annoying that. We'll change that to red. So triangle can please be red, and guess what? It doesn't move this time. Priceless. Don't rush it, by the way. Don't try and speed it across. It will tend to have a meltdown otherwise. So, let's now think of this. We've got our target. We've got our ship. How the hell do I get that panel to move up? When's the time to get that panel to move up? Well, that panel needs to move up when this boss has been defeated. That's the only time, yeah? So New Lodge Connection, when defeated, and you then have to go and choose Ronan, which is weird, because if you hadn't set Ronan up to start with, and you set Darth Vader, you have to make sure they do match, yeah? So when Ronan is defeated, can we go to that path tool, and can we then switch it on, okay? So that will move the path up, but, so we'll switch it on, so great, but then it just keeps going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. So what we want to do is when we get to this point of the tool, not the first one, so as it lifts up, when it reaches that point, new logic connection, when point reached on path, can we then switch it back off? And that will leave us those destructible blocks visible to the user, which is great. So they, get, they can see it now, brilliant, they'll have that effect and everything's done. Then I was thinking, well, how's the user, after they've de defeated the boss, know what to do? How do they know they've got to go up into that area of the screen? I can't put a message, get on the ship, it doesn't, there's nothing I can do because I can't use a text tool. So what I thought was, is, well, why don't I have some explosion occur on the ship, maybe some smoke or something. So when we look around, we see something new that's happened that will attract the player to that part. So we have to lead the player down the road. Now. Without having the text tool, it makes you have to think of gameplays, and this is why the more you do with Disney Infinity, you become more of a game developer trying to think of all the different things you're going to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a little effects tool. Uh, and what I'm going to have is I'm going to have an explosion, uh, and I'm going to have some smoke. So I'm going to need new two more effects generators. All right? They're all going to be located at the same locator, so it's not a problem. Yeah. Okay, so we'll use these. And what these will do is these will then, when we connect on here, so uh, new locator connection, all connected to the same pot. When Ronan is defeated, we're going to send two signals to this. And then the user will play around and go, where do I go now? Oh, look, there's something happening on the top of the screen. We have a smoke. So when you watch the, the end here, when I play the whole clip again, the smoke is to attract the user so, and go and investigate what actually happened. And then they go, oh, look, there's breakable rocks. They shoot it and go, ah, oh, look, and there's the doorway. So you can tend to lead them through, which is not too bad. I tested it with uh, with Jessica, and she, she was able to find it and saw it and said, "Fine, good, yeah, it works." As my as my guinea pig, as my tester. Right, I was trying to put a place where I wanted it. I didn't want the explosion, by the way, in the way because if I put it right in front of the door, they're not going to see the hole. So I wanted it slightly to the side, so you can get to see it. So I just put it slightly up on the screen. So there's my two options there connected up to that, that list. So what we're going to do is going to go on the defeat of Ronan. So go down here, new logic connection, uh, when defeated, yeah. And then it goes, who's defeated, right? And it's going to be the Ronan thing again. Making sure you pick the wrong way. If, you, if you're speeding through this late at night, don't pick the wrong one. Can we have the effects generator go in? So can we then switch that one on? 
So uh, this one's going to be just played once, yeah? Uh, well, no, in fact, we'll do the smoke plume, which is constantly. So we do play loot, smoke. Yeah, and we want the smoke plume. That will just keep the smoke travelling up in the air. And the last one I want to do the same thing again. New logic connection. And we only get, we're going to do a massive explosion to try and attract them to the top there. So when we beat Ronan again, we go back to the next one. And we're going to say in this one here, can we play, and this is just play once. And because the big explosion is only under that setting, you can't have this in the loop. So we're going to do large explosion. Hey presto. And that's us done. That is there. We've done that section on the screen. Right, so that's it completed. That's it all now done. And we now need to test this. Before I now hide all my logic, I want to test this to see if it works. Now, the problem I've got here is, is that there is a tool that says on initialize, you can activate the spaceship and trigger it all off. But the problem with that is it's on load of the level, which means if I've got anything wrong, I can't change it. So therefore, I'm not going to use the initialize tool in this case. And the reason for that is that the path tool is essential here for that spaceship. And once I've got it wrong, I'll have to do the whole thing again. So what I thought I would do is I would do a trigger area. And when I walk into that trigger area, that will start the level off. That allows me to save it, go through the trigger, test it, see if it all runs. Yeah, And that also gives me the option that then when I reload it back up again, it won't automatically start. So this is why I chose the trigger. This is to do my test. Yeah, so I just put a trigger air here, and I thought, well, if I should walk anywhere through this barrier, so what I then decided to do, right, let's make it a massive barrier, so there's no chance I can make. So I lifted it right up and dragged it all the way across. So if I'm playing gameplay as I walk through, it sets the timer up, and the spaceship will start to build. Right now, again, I will probably get rid of this when I complete this game. Uh, when I'm happy with the level and finish it off, and then I will use the initializer tool to set this thing off. But this is so now I can test it to see if it would run in a game environment. Yeah. So we're we're still not finished yet. We haven't done the full run because a lot of you've obviously you've tried it when you load it up. You then find you've got the little bugs and one of those things. Uh, well, there's two mistakes I've done and I've not pointed those out yet. So this little logic gate here is the the heart and soul of it. By sending that input into there, resets the switches, puts on the effects, move all the bricks. Is everything is triggered from that one point. Yeah. It all comes from that area. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do new logic get connection. Yeah. On entered by a player, any player. Yeah. I'm going to input a signal into this logic gate. Okay, and you go, why do you do that? The reason for it is I don't want to have to restart it every single time. All right, so on output, can we then start everything up? So that then says, right, go make everything come to life. But then if I go back into that trigger area, I don't want to have the effect. So on an output from that trigger area, I'm going to close that gate. So if I should walk back in there again, it's not going to resend the same signal again on the screen. Right, now I can delete that button. Right, I would save this and then I will test it. But that is now all ready for us to test it, for us to run and play, play the game and everything's ready to go. And that's when I found out a huge mess up. Yeah, All right. That's where I realised that when we created the enemy wave generator, we didn't use any locators. And the word I think you're looking for is a muppet. So what we need to do is set that correction, and then I need to put the repeater in place, which I messed up as well. So let's now pretend I've tested it, and let's go and fix those errors. So the thing I forgot to do. Right, so I've just moved this option here. Is that after I've tested it running, it all seemed to work fine. The spaceship looked good. I can correct it now. Although I've made this mistake, the good thing is it showed me here by having it saved, I can still make those changes. And while I'm, while I'm testing the screen, and this is the problem here: that enemy generator, all my enemies appeared on top of the roof. That's not what I wanted. Nope. So I need to find a locator. Okay, and you put a locator in and set that up on the screen. So let's find my locator. And there's five of them, so let's put five enemies on. Okay, that's so I've missed that section off. And we put this through.
and I'll just connect here. So all I'm doing is just doing the locator to the, to the enemy spawner, just going to do that with each one. So um, I, I hope you uh, don't mind that I've, I've uploaded these all up all on the same day, so you can look at this section, so you weren't going to span this over a week. I think I mentioned this, I don't know if I mentioned this in the other clips, I may have edited it out. If you're doing a YouTube channel, ideally you want to keep constant uh, material going on, all that it gets benefit for you. So theoretically, uh, on if I was doing this uh, professionally and doing it for myself, then what I should do is do this clip, one clip one week and one clip the next week. Uh, that's not how I operate. I want you to get to be able to play this straight away. So they're all being posted straight away, these three. I haven't finished the other ones off, so I'm going to do those, but I can't guarantee you how long they're going to be. So, not they're not going to be four months. Yeah, I'm hopefully in about a couple of weeks' time I'll get the next one out, uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, this should keep you busy, uh, but we should have at least I would say four more clips before Red Dead comes out, and by that stage, no one's going to be watching me at all then, because uh, you'll all be playing that. I wonder how many people have got a backlog of games to play. Yeah, uh, the ones I told you in one of the previous clips. There's a few that I've platinum recently. Uh, I've still got Horizon to platinum yet to do. I've still got God of War to finish off. There's so many games I need to go and finish. I've still got uh, Ghost Wildlands to finish. So there's so many more you've got to finish. You think like slow their games down, guys? <laughs> Ain't got time. It's a shame I have to work. Oh uh, well. Right. So all I'm just positioning where do I want the enemies to appear. Now I'm making sure that a lot of them appear near the cars because I want them to get hit by a car to start with. That's one cool thing. Yeah. And I'll move it across. And then the other option we're going to show you the other correction which is the, which I stressed a number of times was the timer was completely wrong. I just I kept on testing and why is it not working? And it had to be the repeater. So these are my these are where my enemies are now going to appear in the correct place, which is good. Okay. Okay, we'll do the last one. That's it. So that that is all the last one done. So that's the enemies fixed. The little problem I missed off there. And then the last thing here is that timer is useless. So we're going to delete that out that's gone we're going to put the repeater in that I stressed and by the way if you're if you're as good a shot as me what I'd advise you to do is make the repeater a longer period now I put 10 seconds to try and set myself a challenge and as you can see I only just accomplish it so in there if you find it too easy make the repeater a quicker session so on there I'm going to set this to 10 seconds because I thought 10 seconds for five objects was quite good but I did struggle yeah so let's change that to 10 Okay, and that's our repeater. Now the good thing is by having these objects here is if I'd linked it all to that timer I would have to do all those links again but I don't need to. All I've got to do is send the signal back to those trigger gates. So in this case here is when we get to this signal here we want all the objects to be reset and displayed. So in that case then we'll do new logic connection. Can we start the repeater on? Yeah. So with enemy on here, so new logic connection can we have on output, can we switch the repeater on? Well in that case you can, when you do that option you can set that screen there which will do, do a reset because you have the timer which is cool. And we'll do new logic connection again I did the wrong up other setting. So new logic connection on output. Can we put that repeater on? So that now goes on, triggers it, fine. That sends it through on on the list. So what we can do here, new logic connection on repeat. Can we input that signal back into there? And by doing that, that resets the clock, resets the counter. But when the counter is reached, new logic connection. And I think I did that bit wrong. I should have used the logic gate. But when target is reached, which is the wrong one, I should have done the other setting. So when target reached, I now link it to that one, which we've got on the screen. But I've also linked it back to that repeater. Yeah, because that's the gate that I should have done it from. 
not the counter. I should have done it from this logic gate, so I did the wrong section there. So I was just going wrong. So I was going about to make another mistake. So it's this one controls the thing that we've done it. So therefore, new logic connection on output. Can we then turn that off? Stops the repeating, and that is our fix. That's the little fix for there on the screen. So the game is now complete, is now ready to go. All I need to do now is tidy up my logic icons and hide them out of the way. And hey presto, what you'll see is I've now hidden all those items out of the way. If you look down the cards, I've rearranged it to look like a pattern so you don't realise that they are actual tools. The logic you see, well where's all those stuff that you put on top of the roof? I've built a barrier over the top of it. And before you say why haven't you, how do you show how do you do that? Look at my Spider-Man clip, you know how to use Spider-Man's suit. Uh, that's the same thing I did there. I just moved them all up on the top there and hit them out the screen. If you look on top of my Baxter building, I did the massive roof section again. I put that on the top of tiles and hit them all underneath in that section there. And again, in my Spider-Man clip, I show you the exact same part. Well, that is it. All that really leads us to do it now is to play the game. Now, I'm going to play the game for you, and I'm not going to do any talking over it. I'm going to just let you play and see what you think. Let me know in your comments what you think of the final level and uh, I'll get cracking with the next stage. Cheers guys, thanks a lot. What just happened?
show off. I just can't help myself. 